the world, what it do, what it is, what it look like. This is Rick Blaze, and I'm with my man, Siege. Welcome to another episode of Blazing Takes. Siege, how you doing, brother? Dude, I'm doing great. It's Friday. We, we've been waiting for this day. I got a whole weekend of football ahead of me to look forward to, and I got a whole lot of stuff to talk about here in SimWorld, so let's, let's get to it. We got a whole lot of stuff to talk about. First of all, let's get right into this Coach Heesh situation. Uh, yeah, man, uh, the investigation, I, I mean, damn. I mean, what you, what you, see, what you think about it, man? I, I, I let you say, jump on it first. Look, man, I know that, as we all know, there's an ongoing investigation. So, obviously, nobody's really got the full story. And from what I've seen from people who have spoken to some of the players in the Gulf Coast locker room and people who have – I personally have talked to a couple of the players, and what I'm hearing is – Nobody can fully piece together what's going on, kind of. It seems like mm. a little bit mm. discombobulated. I know that some of the other coaches around the league are having a strong reaction. But let me just – I'll put out there the rumors and the rumblings I'm hearing. Coach Hughes came in, and it seems he's taking kind of a very straightforward, very blunt approach. He's going to do things his way. He's got a very specific way that he wants the lineup to look, things like that. Uh, I'm hearing reports that there's some tension in the locker room. And again, I say reports lightly as all of this is hearsay. All of this is information right. I'm getting from around the league, from a couple of the players. Only people who really know what's going on are the people investigating it. And that's why they're doing it. But I know a lot of the coaches are saying he's kind of coming with a weird, a weird approach. You know that someone dropped an article yesterday talking about apparently he's trying to replace one of their star players. Something like that, he's coming in and right away trying to replace the guy. Now, I don't know if he doesn't fit his scheme or the two don't get along, but a lot of people are not taking that kindly. They're saying, what are you doing? How are you going to come in and just replace the guy? But here's the thing, Rick. I think it's supposedly driving some of the Gulf Coast players away. They're saying they want a way out. They want to leave. A couple of the guys are, are trying to look for new teams now, so I hear. But I don't think that's all on Coach Heath. Because we also yeah. got to remember that, that this locker room took the departure of Coach Hyman pretty roughly. That was a rough thing for them. So I think yeah. they're still feeling that. And now you got a coach coming in who is a really straightforward. He's got his way of doing things, and he's going to do it that way. And to be honest, I don't really have that big of a problem with what he's doing. As far uh, really, as I know. Yeah. As far as it's, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, if that's, if that's the situation, Marsh, if the only thing we got going on here is because the coach, coach, uh, he should want to come in and run his ship. How you run this ship? I ain't got a problem with that, man. When you talk about investigation, man, I thought that had something to do with some kids. You know what I mean? I'm like, oh, they got something to do with some kids. Man, what's going on with the kids? And, you know, and, but if the, if the situation is just that he want to run his ship, how you want to run this ship? Hey, man, that, that's that's between him and the ownership. That's that's kind of what you want in a coach sometimes. You know what I mean? Especially yeah. when you just lost Hyman, mean, you just lost kind of the centerpiece in the Aaron Cruz. You still got Suno, but like you want a coach who's going to come in with a firm vision. He says, this is what we're going to do. I'm going to bring in recruits who fit this. If you want to stick around and fit my program, great. If not, you know, good luck. And But that's the thing. Is, I don't know what's going on. Could there have been some altercations between him and some of the players that we don't know about? Potentially. We don't know all the news, but from um, what I'm hearing cool. is it, it's just – right, right. I think they're just still feeling the effects of Coach Hyman's departure, and that's totally valid. I get where these kids are coming from, but I think we just got to wait and see what kind of comes out about this, man. I agree, and I'll say this. I'm going to throw my name in the hat, uh, Siege. If Coach Heath ain't got his stuff together, if the investigation proves Coach he's not the man for the job, I'm going to throw my name in the hat for the, for the good coach job. Rick, we, we both of us keep throwing our names and hats for uh, coaching jobs. But I'm going to throw, throw my name on the list for the Gulf Coast job, baby. I think they got some talent out there yeah, yeah. Uh, in, in that area. And uh, I can I can build Gulf Coast into a contender this season. Look. With the, I'm, and, and I'm talking about not going outside of my Gulf Coast region either. Within my region, I can build a Gulf Coast contender this season. Guarantee. So we'll see what Coach – hopefully Coach, coach Heesh – uh, the investigation, you know, all this stuff blows over and cooler heads prevail, and we get we can get back to talking about basketball as it relates to Gulf Coast. So we'll kind of see how that unfolds, man. Hey, and if nothing else, bro, the way that some of the other coaches are coming at him, and again, no fault to those coaches. I it, it's a new coach comes in and he's running things a little differently. That can be abrasive. So 
these coaches might also know a little bit more about what's going on. So I don't know. But, yeah. but all I'm going to say is all of this, if it does blow over and Coach Heesh is there and he's building this team, he's going to have a chip on his shoulder. He's going to say, yes, yeah, you know how y'all didn't like what I was doing? Check this out. Mm-hmm. This is what I'm going to do to beat you. So I, mm-hmm. it's going to be real interesting to watch throughout the season. Very. So speaking of coaches, speaking of players, uh, let's have a little fun. Uh, let's talk about Sim World and the players, and let's talk about jerseys, man. I want to know if you had to buy a Sim World player jersey, basketball jersey, right now. See, who's your number one jersey that you're buying off the rack right now for Sim World? Look, I'm gonna be re- see. This isn't my answer because this jersey doesn't exist anymore. Because he, he <laughs> but I really like the Heartland Zombie Stars jerseys. So it would have been my man, Renzo Bryant. Shout out Renzo Bryant for the pick and roll segment. It would have been his jersey. But since since we know that he's on his way out. He's in purgatory now. We don't know what team he's on, so we can't right. get his jersey. Right? So I'm not, I can't get his jersey uh, right now. So uh, I think it's going to be, and it might be similar to what your pick would be, but it's going to be, it's going to be that guy, Arthur Lattimore. I like Cascadia's jersey. Okay. Either that or okay. if I got KPJ over with Beast of the East, the nice, clean, simple black. I would love a Beast of the East jersey. Something yeah. like that. You know what I mean? But something like that. I, I could dig that. Now, I, I, those are really two good answers. Now, I had to – I'll be honest with you, uh, Siege. I had to go and really do some research about this because I'm really picky about my fashion of what I wear. And I looked at five or well, six jerseys that I thought were really good jerseys just off top. Beast of the East, the North. Queen oh. City, uh, BTA, Europe, and Run DMV. To me, they have the cleanest jerseys where I can wear anytime outside of playing a game of basketball. I can put on some some, some sneakers and some and some and some kicks. I mean, some sneakers and some tennis, <clears throat> some jeans or some shorts, whatever, and I can rock them. So out of those sixteen, I had to ask myself which which one of those players that I'm going to get. When I look at Beast of East, you got two player names that jumped out. Porter Jr., like you said, and I love, I think XO would be really cool on the back of the jersey. Oh, that would be fine. Cutting XO is really good. So I had that as my option. The North, I didn't really, Queen City, I don't even know who on that, who the hell on their team yet. So I can't pick, BTA, their team is still in flux. Run DMV, I definitely don't know who the hell on their team. <laughs> so I, I have to go with my, with my answer, and it's going to surprise everybody. I'm picking Europe's jersey, Leonidas. Papadopoulos, baby, on the back. Love Shout it. to Leonel Papadopoulos on the back. I'm representing Sim World Europe. Them jerseys is clean. I'm with it. I'll tell you what, though, Rick. I didn't think about the North, but those jerseys are clean, so I might have to add either, either Enzo Wolf because it'd be nice to have Wolf on the back of that jersey. Wolf on the back. Or, yeah, like or A-Rod just for, you know, he's a stud. But one of those two, I'm adding them to my list also. Yeah, yeah, that's good. I, I, ain't nothing wrong with that. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Man, before before we go any further, though, you know, we steady, you know, moving moving the needle. We steady swinging the pendulum. We got some late-breaking news, Siege. I'm going to let you break it down to the people. This is fresh. How to press this. Siege, what's going down? Late-breaking news just now. So we just got word in. Coach Pope is going to be returning to ah. Cascadia. He's back you know, we got the news not too long ago that he had some personal matters to attend to. He was going to be stepping away. Thankfully for the league and for Coach Pope as a person, that that seemed to be a shorter leave of absence than we expected. He's back yep. with Cascadia as of today. He is back. He is in action. And I'll tell you what, Rick, this is good for a lot of things for Cascadia. One, they uh-huh. getting their coach back. He knows the uh-huh. organization. He's genuinely just a great coach and a great guy. And the big thing... Coach Pope mm-hmm. and Arthur Lattimore, I know you already know what I'm about to say. He's in a relationship. He knows him. Now, now, look, Lattimore, we know he was considering other places. I don't necessarily think that this immediately makes it a sure thing that he's back with Cascadia. But what it does do, what it does do, at the very least, is Cascadia is moving back up to one of the top spots on his option list because he knows Coach Pope. He knows he's got that relationship, that chemistry already. So for Cascadia, this could not be better news. Hey, man. I, hey, the city of Seattle is back on the map. Yes, sir. Thanks to Coach Pope returning. Thank you. Seattle is no longer sleepless. We are no longer sleepless in Seattle. 
Coach Pope has returned. Now he's going to bring back his proper messiah back to his fold. King Arthur Lattimore. Let's keep it rolling. Sleepless in Seattle no more. I'm excited, ecstatic about this news. Absolutely, man. And, uh, yeah, so we're going to – and I'll say, Coach Pope, if you're out there listening, which I hope you are, man, because I don't know if you want to miss this, these plays and takes, but we're happy to have you back. Glad things are uh, looking a little up for you and uh, excited to see what you do this year. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, before we get out of here, we got to do our last segment. This last segment is brought to you by uh, Renzo Bryant. Renzo! Who gave us a great title name for that segment, which is called The Pick and Roll. So this is our Pick and Roll segment. I pick a topic, and then C's got to roll with it. Now, here you go, Siege. And Houston is still a little bit warm. So I thought about and, and so yesterday on my way to the crib, I saw uh, the ice cream man passing by the hood. And so that gave me an idea. And I want to ask you, ice cream man, when he pulled, when you was a kid, when he pulled up in the neighborhood and you stopped, what was your number one go-to ice cream from the ice cream man? I mean, that's a, it's an easy lockdown answer for me. It's the SpongeBob one. It's got the eyes and everything. It's got the candy to the eyes. A little SpongeBob um, ice, ice cream. You know what I mean? You know what I'm talking about? A little on the popsicle stick. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. I, I don't know that's the one. Uh, was it the best one? one hit. Was it the best one in the truck? Certainly not. Was it the flashiest <laughs> and most appealing to me as a child? Yes. Yeah, yeah. I, I think the Sponge SpongeBob was a good one. So my favorite was the the baseball mitt with the glove. Oh. The glove with the baseball. The baseball was actually a bubble gum. Now, the bubble gum was trash, but, you know, as a kid, you liked that. But, the and, and I'm just going to say the firecracker, which is the red, white, and blue one, right? I think that's a staple, right? I said classic. But my, my all-time favorite was the fudge bomb. All right. The chocolate with the banana in the middle, and then the chocolate at the top. Oh, man. That was, that was the most slept on, I think, ice cream from the ice cream truck ever. That's my number one. You, uh, the first you bomb. heard it here first. Rick loves a chocolate covered banana. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> pause, pause, pause. We pause, out here. Pause. Resume. <laughs> resume. <laughs> see, no. I ain't resuming on that. The show is over. Cut to the credits. We see y'all on Monday. <laughs>